Cash Flow Diary Podcast, Episode 543. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I am your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you are here today because I am excited for you. I am very excited for you, and let me tell you why. Because a, a, a while ago, when I was first getting started, and the concept of business came into my life like, ooh, I can do something? I can provide value? There were many, many books that I needed to read, had to read, but there was very few books that I should have been told to read first. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited because one of those first books, especially when you're getting started in business, especially when you're like, man, how do I pull all of this together? My vision is so huge. Who's going to be out there to help me get it done? One of those first books that you should know is called The E-Myth. The E-Myth, it's a book that was originally done in 1986 and by a gentleman by the name of Michael E. Gerber. And guess who we're talking with today? That's exactly why I'm excited for you, because you are about to be introduced to a gentleman who has transformed the lives of millions of individuals all across the globe with his ideas, through his writings, through his speaking. And we have him here to do the same for you and I today. He continues to be a prolific writer and influencer in many different ways, all the way from his new book, The E-Myth Chief Financial Officer, to a university, literally radical you. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, here's what I want you to do. I know you're walking the dog, you're thinking about dishes, and maybe what you're gonna eat for dinner tonight, but now it's time for you to pay attention. It's time for you to grow, and it's time for you and I to become bigger, better, better entrepreneurs as we listen and learn and love Michael E. Gerber. Michael, how you doing? Hey, Jay. How are you? I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> possibly a little overexcited uh, at this particular moment in time, so I'm going to do my best uh, just to, to stay focused and, and make this thing happen. Now, this being the first time that you're here, I have to ask you the same question I ask everybody else the first time that they're here. You ready? I am. All right. I tend to think that, well, I look at entrepreneurs today because I think entrepreneurs and superheroes have a ton of things in common. For example, as a entrepreneur, occasionally I can envision myself flying around town, using our products and services, and saving our customers one sale at a time. Also, though, like a superhero, an entrepreneur has a beginning. So if you think about Spider-Man, for example, there was a time when he was just a kid going to school, doing his thing. And then one day he discovers that he's got superhuman abilities because he was bit by a spider. And now he has to make a choice. Do I use this newfound ability for good or for evil? So my question to you is as follows. Before your many books like the e-myth e-myth revisited the e-myth contractor attorneys and everything else that you are in the process of creating before all the speaking before everything that we know you for today what we want to know is who is michael e gerber well it's a great question jay i could say summarily that i'm simply a wandering jew who found my path, um, not until I was 41 years of age. Mm. And that happened purely by accident. I happened to be visiting my sister and brother-in-law 
on my way to someplace else uh, for a completely different reason that I found myself there. And my brother-in-law owned a small advertising agency in Silicon Valley. And he said to me, Michael, I've got a client, got a startup, a high tech company selling a high tech product, but he can't convert the leads we've created for him into sales. Would you come with me to meet with Bob and find out what his problem is? Hmm. I said, Ace, I don't know anything about business because ladies and gentlemen, at 41 years of age, I hadn't a clue about business. Hmm. And I certainly don't know anything about high tech. So how can I help him? And Ace, my brother-in-law said, Michael, you know more than you think you do. Just do me a favor. Let's go meet Bob and let's see what happens. So given the way I am, I said, sure, why not? And Ace took me to meet Bob and introduced me to Bob and Ace then said to Bob and to me, guys, I'm going to take off for about an hour. I'll come back and pick Michael up then. Enjoy yourselves. And with that, Ace split, as they say. Hmm. And, and there I am with Bob, and Bob's with me, and Bob's looking at me, and he said, so, Michael, what do you know about my business? And I said, nothing, Bob. <laughs> And he looks at me with that strange look, already imagining wasting an hour of his time with a guy who doesn't know anything about his business. And he said, so, hopefully, so what do you know about my product? And I said, less than that, Bob. <laughs> and so Bob looks at me and says, so then what? You don't know anything about my business. You don't know anything about my product. How can you help me? And I said, Bob, straight out, I haven't a clue. Hmm. Ace thought I could. You like Ace. I like Ace. And we've got ourselves to deal with for the next hour. So I guess the only thing we can do is to sit down and talk about it. Now, you got to understand, Jay, I started that little conversation with two assumptions. First of all, I didn't know anything about business, and there was no question in my mind about that. And second, my assumption was that since Bob owned one, he did. Mm. And so I began to ask him questions about his business. And one question after another question after another question after another question and went on and on and on and on. And gradually, as that occurred, and as I began to realize that the answers Bob was giving me were completely anecdotal, meaning there were no real facts there at all, hmm. that second assumption that I had that since Bob owned a business, he understood what business is, was completely destroyed. Bob didn't. The hmm. second assumption became radically different for me. And that was, I realized I did know something about business. And that was selling is a system. Uh -huh. And I knew that because I'd learned that in the most ignominious way possible, I learned how to sell encyclopedias. <laughs> nice. It happened to be Encyclopedia Americana. Now, that's a time years and years and years ago, and the people we're talking to right now have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> right. I went door to door, knocking on doors to get an opportunity to pitch our wares which was the Encyclopedia of Americana, the Book of Knowledge, yeah. and sundry other books that came along with it. That was a system. Yes. Meaning you didn't have to know anything to get the job. It was straight commission. But what they gave me 
was an education that was absolutely mind blowing. They gave me a script. Yeah. And they said, memorize it. Come back tomorrow morning. And I memorized the script they gave me. And I went back the next morning. And he said, so let me hear it. And I said it. And he said, absolutely perfect with these exceptions. Listen to me, he said. And then he said the very same script, but emphasizing different points and saying different words in a different way than I had. Mm -hmm. And that began my real tutelage. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. This is what it is. Well, here I am with Bob, and Bob doesn't know that. So I'm essentially saying to Bob, Bob, your problem is really obvious. You hired sales engineers to sell your high technology product simply because you thought they had to be engineers Mm -hmm. to be able to understand it. And they had to have sales experience in order to be able to sell it. The big mistake you made was you didn't understand that selling is a system. So you could have brought aboard high school graduates with no education whatsoever. And if you had created a selling system, they could have perfected how they delivered that script, that system, that methodology in such a manner that you could convert all the sales you ever wished to convert. And yeah. Bob looks at me like I'm out of my mind. <laughs> and he said, well, how do you create a selling system? Can you do that? And I said, of course, Bob. So Bob hired me. Nice. And he comes to pick me up. He says, what happened? I said, Bob just hired me to create a selling system for him. And Ace looks at me like I'm out of my mind. And he said, how in the world can you do that? You don't know anything about business. You don't know anything about high tech. I said, Ace, that's what I told you before we came here. I discovered what I do know. And that's what I'm setting out to do. And that was the beginning of everything that followed for the next 45 years to this moment in this time, Jay, as I'm speaking to you. That, uh, you know, I I love how uh, your story is, again, very similar to many other entrepreneurs that we've interviewed and talked to. Because oftentimes it's our, our genius gets displayed or comes out in from ways that we weren't even anticipating or from a place where we thought we were weak. And, and it's just like, Oh my God, I do know something I do. I have a special ability. I can help people. This is great. Now, my question though, is that at that moment, when you realize, you know, it's that again, it's like that same Spider-Man moment, you have this decision to make, and there's usually something behind that decision at at some point in time because everybody has to make it sometimes we luck into a client or we just like oh wow this worked out but what i'm eager to hear is what where was that switch point for you where you go you know what i can make a real business out of this thing i can make something out of this and and let's go do that well it actually happened right there in that advertising agency Um, I started with Bob, and then a second client, and then a third client, and then a fourth client. And of course, I didn't think of them as my clients. I thought of them as Ace's clients, (laughs) and I was there to help them to achieve a result they obviously didn't know how to achieve. Uh And it didn't matter what kind of business they were in. It could have been an ad agency. It could have been a furniture store. It could have been anything and everything. And it was anything and everything. And the more I worked with them, the more I understood um, how critical what I was doing with them was. And it wasn't just critical about making more sales. It wasn't just critical about the money. 
It started out that way for every single one of them. But what it was critical about was truly transforming the way they thought about the business of business and the purpose of their being there. I had this moment, this absolutely exquisite moment, Jay, when after one client, I was on my way to a second client, and I decided to stop off to get something to eat, and I stopped off at a McDonald's hamburger stand. And I walked into that restaurant with one thing in mind, meaning pick up some food. Mm-hmm. And I suddenly was struck by the visual reality of that extraordinary company. And the thought came to my mind, my God, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And it had nothing to do with getting food. (laughs) I turned around and walked out with this realization that this is what's missing in every single client company I've been working with. Mm -hmm. This totality of a system that was so beautifully, visually, functionally expressed by that McDonald's restaurant. Mm -hmm. And that then became the picture that I used from that moment forward. Well, it wasn't long before Ace began to get really tired of me continually challenging him because he didn't see his business the way I was learning every one of his clients needed to see theirs. And it became a major conflict. He was a technician suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure which meant he loved to do the work, yeah. but he didn't love the business of it. Right. And so he never truly could take in what I was saying to him, which meant he could never truly take advantage of the profound positive impact he could have on countless thousands upon thousands of, upon thousands of small businesses. Yeah. In his business. So he brought somebody in to replace me. Uh huh. That guy's name was Tom Travisano. And Tom had been very successful with franchising, not actually franchising himself, but consulting with franchises that weren't working. Hmm. So Ace felt Tom would truly be absolutely perfect doing what I was doing. And so I spent about a week and a half with Tom as he watched me do what I was doing. And then he asked me this question. He said, Michael, why aren't you staying here to continue to do that? I said, that's a conversation for another time, Tom. He said, but where are you going? I said, I'm going to start up my own company to do this very thing. Mm. And Tom just sat there and he thought, And he didn't say anything, but he thought. And then he said, Michael, I want to go with you. (laughs) And he did. Yes. And we started our very first business development firm, which we now know these many, many, many years later, Mm -hmm. was the very first business development coaching company on the planet. Yeah. And that's what we did. I like that. I like that. Now, I, I there's something that you said in, well, you said many things, but there's one thing that I know right now that I, I, I really want to dig into for a second. You you mentioned how that, you know, uh, it was a technician versus, so you love to do the work versus the business of it. And there have been times, especially my, my kids, my kids have accused me like, what do you do? You got, you do nothing. Everybody else does your work. And I'm just like, okay, that's pretty funny. Uh, but, but this is the point, especially for those uh, that are listening that have a real estate slant or 
uh, those who are just getting started, one of the things that I encountered, experienced with your your books is is exactly what you said. It's it was one I can do this, and then it was like, oh my god, I can do whatever I I want because it doesn't come down to I'm not limited by my skill sets per se. Yet there's a number of people who are listening right now who are uh, their their mindset is such that well I don't know how to do that. I need to go learn how to do all of the pieces of that thing first before I get started. And I would love for you to talk to that person just for a moment. Hello there, entrepreneur. This is Jay Massey. And what I want to say to you is that the number one mistake that I have ever made in business, number one, has been waiting too long to do the books, waiting too long to get the bookkeepers, the accountants, the CPAs, the CFOs involved. And I don't want you to make that same mistake. That mistake cost me over six figures, and now for a significant discount, you have the ability to get your books together using Fresh Books. So what I want you to do is I want you to go over to gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary. Again, that's gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary. Fresh Books is the easy to use software designed to help you, the small business owner, the freelancer, get organized and save time on invoicing, getting paid faster, keeping those books in order so that it becomes a bonus for you to do your taxes as opposed to a burden. Go over to gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary and get started today. And now let's get back to the rest of the story. Okay, well, gladly. Um, the very significant truth of what Jay just said and asked um, is that when you start a small company, um, you are doomed to misunderstand what, in fact, the reality of starting a small company is. That's why, in fact, the vast majority of small companies fail. Now, I'm saying this to everybody and everybody who's listening within earsight of us, Jay, has to know this, that fully 90% of all small businesses will be out of business before their 10th anniversary. That means only one out of 10 are going to succeed. But understand that the one out of 10 While they stay in business, they don't truly succeed in business. They simply persist longer, harder than everybody else did. So what do you truly have to know when you start your own company? That's what we've been teaching literally hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of students of ours over the past 45 years. And that's why they've been writing to the millions upon millions of readers we have. Let me put it like this. You can't learn everything that must be known in order to be successful in operating your own company. You can not. Hear me, you cannot know everything you need to know, but your company needs to. Right. So if you can't know everything you need to know, but your company needs to, then the very clear question that you must ask yourself, so what is it that I absolutely positively need to know? in order to start out my company right? And here's the very simple answer to that question. Mm -hmm. Because within the answer I'm going to give you, you're going to discover the fundamental principles that are critical to launching, growing, designing, building any company on the planet. I call it the dreaming room. Hmm. Understand when I say the dreaming room, understand what I mean is that the critical 
role you must learn to fill is the role of the founding entrepreneur. Hmm. In short, not the guy who sells the real estate, but the guy who designs, builds, launches, and grows the company that sells real estate. And in that difference, you're going to find the magic of McDonald's, of Disney, of Apple, of Google, of every extraordinary company on the planet. In short, what you need to know is the guy who started Apple didn't know anything. (laughs) Yes. Anything about business at all. And when you get that, And get also that Apple was the first trillion dollar enterprise ever created on this planet. You then have to wonder at what was the difference between Steve Jobs and every other one of the millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of people, the wannabes who go to work, go to work, go to work on their own, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, 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 only to find themselves shrunk out and exhausted and completely incapable of doing even small well, let alone huge. Okay, so let let me then, because I know the question that's going through everyone's head like literally this exact second. When they hear you say that, what comes up for the for many, I'm sure, is but but Michael, how how do I successfully I'm just getting started. How do I successfully split my time between working on the business as you describe, designing, building and and launching and growing versus being the technician? Because right now, you know, that that's just it feels like that's where I am. Like how much is there some sort of ratio time? How do I make this thing happen if the service has to be delivered right now? Well, you understand, first of all, you've just shared with me um, about four assumptions <laughs> that didn't, weren't born by what I said, Understood. but by your need. Mm-hmm. Forget your need right now. We're starting an enterprise. We're going to grow a company of one to a company of 1,000. We're going to grow it from doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, to getting it done, to getting it done more than getting it done, to creating something that is so spectacular, I could never imagine it at the outset. Let's go back to what I said, Jay. Mm -hmm. I said I invented the dreaming room. And at the heart of the dreaming room is the entrepreneur. And at the heart of the entrepreneur are four very critical personalities. You understand every single individual who is called to start their own company, to go out on their own, to become self-employed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, must first understand the game they're about to play. Hmm. And effectively, they've got to understand, Jay, who, who is going to be responsible for playing that game whole hog plus the postage. <laughs> And that person is the entrepreneur within you, the creator within you. You know what said, Jay, we're born in the image of God. Yes. And whether you're a believer in God or not a believer in God, you know that there are many, 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 many billions of people on this planet who do believe in God whether they be a Jew, whether they be a Christian, whether they be a Muslim, they believe in God. God is the ultimate creator. And if then we're born in the image of God, as it said, then it becomes obvious that means we're born to create. 
So every human being on the planet, if you follow the logic, is born to create. To create what? Well, if in fact we're born in the image of God, we're born to create a world fit for God. And that suddenly becomes the inspiration for awakening the creator within. And the creator, as I call him, is the entrepreneur. Hmm. So who is this entrepreneur? He or she is four distinct personalities. The dreamer, the thinker, the storyteller, and the leader. Now hear me if I've, I'm, I'm holding a class with people who want to go out on their own, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. I'm going to say to them, folks, before you get all busy and in a sweat, before you get hot to get your first customer, before you do anything, <laughs> that even resembles making a living, you've got to set the foundation for what you're about to do. And it sounds like this. The dreamer says, I have a dream. The thinker says, I have a vision. The storyteller says, I have a purpose. And the leader says, I have a mission. Now, we've suddenly begun something, Jay, in a way 99.999999% of all people who start going out on their own to do something never, ever do. That's why I call it the dreaming room. Yeah. Because until you understand what your dream is, what your vision is, what your purpose is, and what your mission is, you don't have anything of substance to launch your new company. That but once you do have a dream, a vision, a purpose, and a mission, and you've got to discover them, they're not just sitting there waiting for you to do that. As soon as that happens, Suddenly, you have the inspiration that's critical, not just for the short term, but most importantly, for the long term. 100%. I, I, man, I'm having such fun right now because what I've often uh, said to people is who've asked me a very similar style of question, I just simply say, well, if you answer these questions, these five questions in this order, you'll you'll be able to figure it out. And it's just usually answer why, what, when, who, then how, because who will tell you how to get whatever you need done and, and, and make that happen. And it's just amazing to to hear that restated in various different ways. Now, I've got another question that I've got. I've got to get this in here because I'm curious to know when it when you're dreaming and designing these systems are you building in your mind? Is it built for where you are today or is it built for the ultimate end goal? Because, you know, for example, in our world uh, of, of operating short term rentals, so we we leverage real estate and we provide short term housing to corporations, et cetera, uh, all across the globe. And what ends up happening is there's a certain level of staff that's required for you know, handling customers and, and guests and inquiries and, and maintenance and all these other things. But when, and there are some tools, you know, specifically software tools that are better suited when your company is, you know, X, Y, you know, tw five units in size versus a hundred locations versus more. And when we're initially designing the system, because tools have different capabilities, so do people, so do certain staff levels, when are you thinking like, hey, what do I need for today? Or is it what I need for five years from today where I'm intending on being? Well, um, let me give you the um, simple answer to that question mm -hmm. rather than the complicated answer. Um, you spoke about and uh, introduced to the folks listening to us um, where we are at Michael E. Gerber Companies today. Mm hmm. After having worked with well over 100,000 small business clients, after having written now um, over 32 um, books on 
the thesis that I've just somewhat described to you, Mm -hmm. after having millions upon millions upon millions of readers, um, we have launched um, the most important enterprise of our career. Now, you got to understand, I'm just about to turn 83. We launched this enterprise in 2018 on March 4th, which is my wife's birthday. (laughs) And it's quite appropriate saying March 4th, stupid, because that's exactly what we're about to do at Radical U. Answering your question, Radical U is built on what we call the Eightfold Path. And I want you to imagine we're starting out with a student who hasn't created a company, is now about to create their company of one, meaning it's just you, Jay. It's just Judy, Jay. It's just Murray, Jay. It's just anyone. And it's anyone, anywhere, um, wanting to do anything. The Eightfold Path defines every single step on that path. Over five years, starting with a company of one and growing it to an enterprise of 1,000. Because we're saying that the process is critical for every single one of us, because it works for every single one of us. But it's built for the end game, And that means a company is a product for sale. Hmm. So we're going to work on this product, this new company, this company of one, to prepare it to grow so it can ultimately be acquired. How do we do that? The eightfold path is how we do that. And it deals with both where you are today and where you intend to be five years from now. Got it. The first step in the Eightfold Path is the dream. The second is the vision. The third is the purpose. And the fourth is the mission. The fifth is what we call the job. And it's the client fulfillment system, whether you're going to be selling a product or whether you're going to be selling a service, makes absolutely no difference. The client fulfillment system must be designed, built, launched, and grown. The step following that is what we call the practice. And the practice is the client acquisition system (laughs) plus the client fulfillment system, which creates a three-legged stool, lead generation, lead conversion, client fulfillment. And so our new erstwhile entrepreneur is going to work on his or her small company of one to design, build, launch, and grow the essential systems that must be in place in order for their enterprise to emerge in a way that McDonald's did. Yeah. Now we're building a practice. The practice is what I call your franchise prototype. The next step is the business. We define a business at Radical U as nothing other than up to seven turnkey practices. Think of a chiropractic company, chiropractor one, chiropractor two, chiropractor three, chiropractor four, five, six, seven, each and every one of them using the franchise prototype, lead generation, lead conversion, client fulfillment to grow their individual practice. Each of those individual practices producing successfully to comprise a turnkey business with a turnkey management system. And now we take the final step, and it's called the enterprise. And the enterprise is nothing other than up to seven turnkey 
businesses. Hmm. Now, if you follow the logic, a turnkey business has what? Up to seven yep. turnkey yep. practices. A turnkey enterprise has up to seven turnkey businesses, which means up to 49, 49. turnkey practices plus a turnkey leadership system. So when you take every single human being on the planet who I'm saying possesses a creator within, all their job is from day one as a company of one, which is what every human being actually is, they go to work on their life in a way to transform their life to create the systems at the heart of their life that enable them to replicate themselves successfully over and over and over and over again, just like Ray Kroc did at McDonald's, just like the founder of Taco Bell, just like the founder of Apple, the founder of Google, the founder of Amazon, you name it. It's the system, stupid, and it's the process by which you build it. A gentleman who's a famous athlete Mm -hmm. said his dad told him, never build a big building on a small foundation. You start at the core of it. Your dream, your vision, your purpose, your mission. So, The last thing I'll say about that, so when we started, Tom and I, the Michael Thomas Corporation, the very beginning of all this, way back then in 19 freaking 77, when we started our first company, we took about three months talking about it. Hmm. And the three months we spent produced our dream, our vision, our purpose, and our mission. Our dream at the Michael Thomas Corporation was stated explicitly like this, to transform the state of small business worldwide. Our vision at the Michael Thomas Corporation was to invent the McDonald's of small business consulting services. Our purpose at the Michael Thomas Corporation was to make it possible for every small business owner who was called to our mission to be able to be as successful as a McDonald's franchisee. And our mission at the Michael Thomas Corporation was to invent the business development system at the heart of it all that would make it possible for us to realize our dream, our vision, our purpose, and our mission. And it's been at the heart of every single thing I've done for all these past 45 years, and it's made it possible for us to literally transform the lives of a gazillion people. (laughs) A gazillion was the uh, accurate, uh, scientifically accurate number, right? Yeah, <laughs> it no, sure is. No doubt, no doubt, and that's and I can hear that, and I still hear that, and and that's what's exciting, uh, and 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 that is, I mean, honestly, quite directly, that's what we've reached out to do, uh, specifically for those looking to practice short term rentals in, in in the real estate space. Now, I I want to, I know that there's a number of people who have been listening this entire time, and they want to find out more maybe about your latest book or Radical You, et cetera. What's going to be the best way for them to track you down and find that stuff out? Well, first of all, let me give everybody a gift. Okay. And that's my latest book. And it's free to every single one of you. All you need to do is to go to freebook.michaelegerber.com. Freebook.michaelegerber.com. The name of that book is making it on your own in America or wherever you happen to live, a journey toward radical self-employment. And it tells you the story of radical you. 
It tells you the story of the only entrepreneurial development school on the planet that in fact will take you through the eightfold path I just described in a way nobody's ever done before. And the good news about all of that is first, of course, it works. Hmm. Second, it's only $497.40 for the entire year. And the first year is the dreaming room. 50 Two weeks wow. of special videos leading you through the process of discovering your dream, your vision, your purpose, and your mission. Hear me, available to every human being on the planet, Jay. Like it. So get that gift, freebook.michaelegerber.com. And then go to Radical U. That's a U like university. Like it. Wonderful. RadicalU.com. RadicalU.com. Sign up. Get started. Join me in the dreaming room. And we're going to blow your ever-loving minds. <laughs> I believe it. Now, uh, as we wind down, I have one last question for you because I... I really have to hear your answer because it is I know it's going to be something that's going to be uniquely different than the majority of the other people that I've asked this question on. And, and it, it it would be there would be so many in the audience who would be mad if I didn't take the time to ask this question specifically of you because of what you've done, the lives you impacted. So I, I know that there's a number of people who are listening They're They're at various different stages. And in the time that they've listened to you and I today They've gone from, you know, maybe I will one day. And some of them, maybe they got to that point where like, you know what? That's it. I'm drawing the line. They're at what I like to call the precipice of decision. And you know, like I know that oftentimes when humans, when we get to that precipice, we have a companion and that companion comes in the form of a voice. And it's a voice that reminds us of, well, why it won't work and how it didn't work last time. And who on earth are you to think you were going to do anything? You're going to do what? You're going to be a business? No, that's not going to happen for you. And for some people, they're related to that voice. So my question to you is as follows. Let's pretend that this time it's going to be different. This time they're going to follow through. This time they're going to do exactly what you say and they're going to do it in the next 24 to 48 hours. What would you suggest that they do? Go to Radical U and enroll. It's that simple. Go to Radical U and enroll. Let go of everything you're thinking. Let go of every experience you've ever had. Let go of every doubt, every concern, every failure, every frustration. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I've had them all. I know exactly what it feels like to be you because I am you. You understand when Inc. Magazine calls me the world's number one small business guru, they're not describing somebody who's different from every other small business owner on the planet. They're describing somebody who's gone through exactly what every hmm. small business on the planet has gone through and will go through and has looked upon it exactly as Ray Kroc looked upon the creation of McDonald's at 52 freaking years old. Hear me. Mm. He created the first store so he could create thousands upon thousands upon thousands of them just like it. Go to work on your company of one, as opposed to in your company of one, and simply trust what I'm saying to you. We're ready to spend an entire year with you, 52 consecutive weeks, teaching you, training you, coaching you, mentoring you, inspiring you, guiding you, step by step by step by step, no matter what you're doing on the street, doesn't make any difference. We're awakening the entrepreneur within, and that's the primary work 
every single one of us must do in order to truly understand why we're here on the planet, what we're here to create, what we're here to have done. So that's the only thing you should do. Go to Radical U, R-A-D-I-C-A-A-L, you.com and begin the journey. And we'll be with you every single step of the way. Awesome. Now, I just want to say thank you. Thank you personally because of your concepts uh, and for me, and I know you hear this all the time, that they have personally you know, set me free. I, as a person who did not think or thought that I had to know a lot in order to get anything done, thought I had to go to college. Like there was a certain path and process that was required uh, going from feeling that trapped feeling to, oh my God, anything is possible and it's possible for me. You were definitely a significant part of that. And I know I particularly just wanted to say thank you and thank you for continuing these many, many decades to to carry that torch. I can still hear it in your voice as if the fire was just burned, uh, born yesterday. And it's exciting to, to hear that you still care as much as you absolutely do. And I know for everyone listening, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to share with us your insight, your wisdom, and your knowledge here with us today at the Cashflow Diary, sir. Well, Jay, thank you, and thank you for your passion. Thank you for understanding what I'm saying. Thank you for applying what I've been doing. And please tell every single person you meet as well to read The E-Myth Revisited, why most small businesses don't work and what to do about it. And that will become the premise for making it on your own in America. And that will become the premise for joining us at Radical U. Every single one of you join us at RadicalU.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. Clearly, we're getting over to Radical U. And yes, I will see you there. But most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard today from an individual who has inspired many, many millions. And in his words, gazillions of individuals who have gone out there and done something with it. So what does that mean? Yes, you're feeling great right now, but it's now time to do something, something observable, some sort of action, something that when you look back seven days from now, 24 hours from now, 10 years from now, you can say that that was the point. This was the day that I began to become different. You've heard me say it before, and I will say it to you again. You will never out-earn your personal growth. The version of you who's listening today will not be the same version that you will meet in the future when you begin taking this action. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.